Hello everybody and welcome to my July 2023 reading wrap up. I currently just have one book to talk to you about. Dane reads. That is uh, Patricia Highsmith's Strangers on a Train. So it's kind of ironic, uh, the first Patricia Highsmith I read was um, The Talented Mr. Ripley which I read while I was in hospital suffering with an abscess. And I currently have like an infection, I have an infected finger, it's pretty bad. Um, so it's kind of interesting that I ended up reading this when I was ill as well, but um, yeah, pretty good book. Um, High, there's something about Highsmith that I just don't, that doesn't quite sit right with me. Um, I think it stops it from being a 4 out of 5, it's probably a 3.5 out of 5 for me. I do think she's a very good writer and her plots are great and her characterization is great. There's just something there that just doesn't quite gel properly with me. Um, but I did enjoy it anyway, and I can see why it's considered a classic. Um, some nice sort of thrills and twists and turns and, and bits like that as well. Um, and I'm excited to now watch the movie as well. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Death Comes to Marlowe by Robert Thorogood. This is the second book in the Marlowe Murder uh, Club series. Solid four out of five for me. Solid continuation of the series. It's got just what I like of... Um, you know, a kind of mystery who done it with a little element of wry humour there. Um, just really great characterisation. It's also a locked room mystery, which I'm a big fan of. Well written, well done, and it's set in Marlowe where I used to work, so I kind of know the location, which probably helped my enjoyment of it as well. But yes, Death Comes to Marlowe, Robert Thorogood, 4 out of 5, did enjoy, would recommend. Full review coming soon. Alrighty, just the one book to wrap up for you, and this is Mississippi Review, <laughs> well, I dropped it, uh, Volume 51, Number 1 and 2. We have poetry, non-fiction, and fiction here. Pretty standard, um, you know, literary magazine. I quite like the layout, I thought that was good. The poetry was good, some nice experimental stuff in it, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, the fiction was okay. The non-fiction was pretty cool. Uh, one of them was actually a non-fiction prize winner. Um, overall, it was pretty bog standard, to be honest, for a literary magazine. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Um, I'm glad I was sent it and that I read it. I don't know if I would go out of my way to track it down, but um, yeah, it was pretty good. Alright guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is The Wishing Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. This is book number 29 in the Wizard of Oz series. Another satisfactory entry into the series, I suppose. I don't know what more you want from me after 29 books. Um, I enjoyed it. Book full review coming soon. It's not mind-blowing or anything like that, but it also hasn't been the worst. I mean, Plumley Thompson, I think, is a more uh, consistent, uh, like... Not skill rating, but like enjoyment level. The books have been pretty much pretty consistent with Plumley Thompson, whereas they were very up and down with the original uh, L. Frank Baum books. So yes, 3.5 out of 5. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Full Bleed, a journal of art and literature. This is the uh, issue number six, the 2023 issue, uh, and it's themed materials. So all of this is uh, poetry and other bits and bobs about materials, very beautifully laid out. Um, I actually have a poem in this called Vanta Black as well, so do do check it out and support your boy if interested and a literary magazine as well. Yeah, it was a really good read. Um, lots of cool stuff going on in here. Just, you know, four out of five, one of the better um, literary magazines I've read recently and I've read quite a few. Hi guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is 2010 Odyssey 2 by Arthur C. Clarke. Decent little uh, follow-up to 2001 A Space Odyssey. I mean, I am not one of those people who really, really enjoyed it. The movie was okay, the book was okay, um, but really I'm more of a fan of uh, Rendezvous with Rama and even some of Arthur C. Clarke's short stuff. But um, yeah, 2010 Odyssey 2, still pretty good. I actually probably enjoyed it more than the first one, I think because it's kind of building on the lore, etc. from the first book. Um, some interesting stuff going on. I gave it like a strong 3.5 out of 5. Okay guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is uh, Captain Salt in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, uh, continuing the stories by L. Frank Baum. Oz book number 30 something, I don't know. Um, some good piratical fun in this one, and again, lots lots more of those puns that I really enjoyed. I mean, um, also a lot of exclamations, so like, um, what we got it, where is it? Goose wing my top sails, mate. Great line. Um, so yeah, enjoyable. This edition sucked. Um, this specific published edition because they've just taken it and like put it in the pub because it's in the public domain or whatever and not done a very good job with it. But yeah, it was a 3.5 out of 5. Hello everybody, I just have one book to wrap up for you today. I'm on my phone, you can probably tell. Reason why will become clear. Uh, this is The Fastidious Assassins by Albert Camus. So this is just a sort of a short 
philosophical book, I suppose, translated from French. Uh, I'll read you the blurb because it's going to be better than what I can what I can give you for it. So, a daring critique of communism and how it had gone wrong beyond the Iron Curtain. Camus' essay examines the revolutions in France and Russia and argues that since they were both guilty of producing tyrant, tyranny and corruption, hope for the future lies only in revolt without revolution. Um, it also talks about uh, like the US, like McKinley. I didn't know President McKinley got shot. And I didn't know that there was another, uh, I know um, obviously Lincoln and Kennedy both got assassinated. I didn't know there was a third president who was assassinated. So I ended up on the Wikipedia page for that. Um, but yeah, some really cool, um, you know, philosophical stuff here. State terrorism and irrational terror. Um, lots of lots of food for thought, really, especially if you're somebody who's into protesting and revolution and all of that stuff. Overall, I gave The Fastidious Assassins by Albert Camus a strong 3.5 out of 5. So... That was what I made of this, and that is the end of my uh, July 2023. I said that again, I did that last time I filmed something. It's my July 2023 uh, reading wrap up. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.